Aloha, I'm Dreaming Bear. And I'm Destiny. And we want to welcome you to another episode of the Literati Experience. You might notice that today we're coming from an unusual location. We are actually on the west side of the island today, visiting some beautiful friends of ours in a lovely place known as the Temple of Love. It's amazing here, just gorgeous. You might see the background behind us, that's the Pacific Ocean as we come to you, we realized that maybe you can't see us so well because of the lighting, but we thought it was more important for you to get a good glimpse of that deep blue ocean in the background. So today, I'm excited to join you. I know Destiny is as well. We're on a journey of our own, of sorts, where we're discovering new truths, visiting these new and exciting thinkers of the past, and finding out ancient truths that actually apply to our everyday life in the here and now. And I've been having such a good time with you as we go through these literati episodes. Mm -hmm. And to hear your thoughts and what they bring up for you is really inspiring to me because it lets me know that this project is a project of worthwhile means, that it really does speak to people in a way. Mm -hmm. And we've been getting some really good responses. So we're gonna keep going with the literati experience and invite you to join us today as we discuss one of my all-time favorite philosophical thinkers, Seneca. Seneca has a beautiful background. If you haven't watched the video yet, go ahead and do that now, and then take some notes, come back and join us for this conversation. But I found that almost every single thing that Seneca said was like knocking the ball out of the park. It was like mm -hmm. one amazing pregnant statement after the next, mm -hmm. and each one building upon the previous one in a way that was so satisfying. You know, I remember doing this piece when I created it, and it actually changed me as a person. It made me a better person. And I don't know, what did you get from, what was your initial impression from Seneca? Just so much goodness. Mm. It's incredible. I mean, yeah, it just, it's easy to also to soak it all in because everything he says is very simple, mm -hmm. you know, but also very profound. Right. And I just love that a lot. Me too. Seneca, one of the great ones. This is a, in a school of thought known as Stoicism, and that's a beautiful school of thought. We're going to be doing several other Stoics on this series, but let's start today with our good old friend Seneca. What's the first thing he has to teach us amongst the many things? As long as you live, keep learning how to live. Wow. As long as you live, keep learning how to live. It's not like we're going to have all the answers immediately. It's not like life comes with a handbook and we know exactly what to do at the right time and every occasion. But that suggests to me that life is a lifelong process of learning life. And that we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves about not knowing everything in the immediacy of now. Mm -hmm. But that the real purpose behind us being here is not so much to know it all, but to learn it all. Yeah. That's kind of what I got. What did it bring up for you? Well, just living in general is, is something, is a big teacher, you know, mm -hmm. and, and every moment is a lesson to learn. And if you are open enough to see that, you can learn a lot more than if you aren't open enough to see that. Mm -hmm. So I think that that concept, you know, living to learn is, is something to live by in every single moment. Right, yeah. right. I think, you know, you get to the age where you think you've learned it all, then you're probably in trouble because mm -hmm. no matter how much you think you know, it seems like there's always something else to teach you how to live in a slightly better way. Yeah. And I like that. I like the thought that this journey isn't a journey that sort of ends. You don't reach the, the top of the mountain, as it were, and then you've arrived. But that until the moment that you transition out of this life, you're actually still learning what it means to be alive. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Keep learning how to live. That's what we're doing. That's what this is about, learning how to live. Mm -hmm. All right, what else does Seneca got to tell us? Count each separate day as a separate life. Mm, what does that say to you? Like every morning when you wake up, 
do the best you can to forget what happened yesterday or the day before and treat this new day as a new day and a new life mm. and and yeah and don't carry baggage from the past right to, to the present you know just kind of let that all go every morning and just kind of wake up with a, a new being within you yes in a way. yeah yeah it sort of suggests that it's never too late it's never too late mm -hmm. and that every moment that you're ready to see the world anew is a moment that the world is ready to be brand new to you mm -hmm. and treat each separate day as a new life that says to me that whatever yesterday brought with all of its frets and worries and troubles that today is a completely new clean slate from which we get to redesign what we want to be i think a lot of that is forgiving oneself of the inconsistencies towards our highest ideals. That's how I like to frame forgiveness for myself, that I would be forgiven of my inconsistencies towards my highest ideals. And each day, each moment, is another opportunity to begin that process. Mm. That's sort of where it, where it brought me to. Each day, each new day, a new life. Mm. Hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. What else we got from Seneca? Man who craves more is poor. It's not the man who has little that's mm -hmm. poor. Yeah. But the one who craves more that's yeah. poor. Knowing that our life is abundantly sufficient in every moment is such a gift. And you know, we live a very down to earth lifestyle. You've seen us in the chrysalis, the great glass pyramid that we have. And it's a sustainable property where Everything that we need is provided by nature, by the sun, by the rain. But what I like most about it, I think, is that it represents what Seneca calls a poverty of desires. Mm. You know, that the richness of life lies in the poverty of desire. And when you think about what is, what is a poverty of desire, it just means you don't want for much. Not really, it's not really wanting more that makes you satisfied. Mm. It's being satisfied with what you have knowing and resting in the knowledge that it is sufficient, abundantly sufficient for our lives. That's what I got from it. Yeah. How about you? It's all about perspective, mm -hmm. you know? Um, if you have the perspective that you are in lack, then you will be poor, you know? Um, but if you have the perspective that you have everything you need and everything you need is given to you and everything you have is enough, mm -hmm. then you will be rich and right. you won't be poor. I think he actually alludes to that. He says that it's not what happens to us that affects us and changes us. It's our perspective of what happens to us yeah. that determines the outcome. Mm -hmm. Perspective is everything. We can be rich and unhappy or poor and super happy. Or what did Princess Diana say? How about moderately wealthy with just a little bit of attitude, yeah. <laughs> something like that. But I find it a great comfort to know that I am cared for and that the less my needs are, the more cared for I, I feel that I am. You know, I don't, what, what really matters in life? I think that's what he's asking. Oh, not even asking, he's just intimating towards. Mm. We have what we need in having each other. We have what we need in having our life and that everything else is superfluous. It's all just a gift. Mm -hmm. You know, icing on the cake, as it were. Yeah. That's what I brought up for me. How about you? Yeah, the same. Um, of course, it's difficult when there's so much to compare. Mm. You know, especially with social media. Yeah. When there's you, you know, like you see someone and they have something, you're like, oh, I want that, and it's like, oh, but you don't have it. So it's like, am I, am I rich or am I poor? But it's like if you just let that go. Don't compare yourself to others, mm -hmm. you know, just stay true to what's within you and what you have right now is enough and trust in that, yes. you know, then you will find your way to being rich and being happy a lot faster than if you were in the game of chasing it. Mm -hmm. If you're in the game of chasing it, it's always ahead of you. It's never in you or within you. And 
Right. A million modern conveniences of life, making life a lot less convenient in a way. Mm -hmm. On some level, the more you have access to or the more choices we have, the less satisfaction we experience in a way. Yeah. So I think uh, being aware of this is a great gift towards how we live our everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what else, Seneca? Speaking to us thousands of years into the future, letting us know. I don't know if it's exactly thousands, but several hundreds of years, let's say that. 4 BC. 4 BC? Yeah. Wow. This is way before you think of people having an enlightened point of view. You know, you think of people before Christ, BC, you think that that's sort of a medieval dark age yeah. of like nebulous non thought. But here we have great thinkers like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, who we'll cover, Epictetus, yeah. all saying some of the very same things, that the true enjoyment of life is in enjoying life itself and not the million or more redundancies that life can be composed of, right? Yeah. All right. He is most powerful, has power of himself. He is most powerful who has power over himself. Of course, yes. It's not about wanting power over another. It's not about being the authority, but it's about being in power of yourself. If you have that, yeah. you could call that self-control. You could call that self-discipline. Mm -hmm. You might even use the word self-love mm -hmm. in those places. If you have that though, it seems like it doesn't matter what power struggles life presents to you because you're already centered mm. in the knowledge of who and what you truly are. Yeah. It's, it's so true because in a way, if you believe that anything outside of you gives you power, you are immediately powerless, mm. you know? So you have to believe that the power comes from within you mm -hmm. to really believe in being powerful you yes know? no more looking outside of yourself for the leader yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah yeah and it, what you exactly what you said just it, it can mean a many of things you know being self-disciplined being self-loving and just having this sense of being centered and knowing who you are and and maintaining who you are that's Power, you know? Back to that philosophical call of knowing oneself. That knowledge of oneself is knowledge of the universe at large. Mm. Beautiful. Love it. Do you have power over yourself? Lord knows we're trying to have power over ourselves. I'm not sure we succeed every day, but we definitely take it to account that that is where it's at. And I think he's going to touch on this in just a second. Mm. What does he ask? What's the next thing he says here? No one was ever wise by chance. No one was ever wise by chance. You're not going to get wise <laughs> just because it's a Tuesday and the rain is falling from the east, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get wise by going through some stuff, by experiencing life, by experience, which is the greatest teacher that there is. We come to the knowledge. We come to wisdom. But without that, we talked about this in previous episodes, that... If someone were just to give us truth on a silver platter, it would almost be worthless because even as it doesn't change the trueness of the truth, but it changes its efficacy for our lives and how we employ that truth can only really be done through the act of living mm -hmm. that truth. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Is that what I brought up for you or? Yeah. I mean, it, you can't just sit around and wait for something to be handed to you. You know, you have to mm -hmm. go out and make it happen. That's how you really make great things happen. Yes. Maybe, yeah, every now and then you are given things, you know, but are they great things? Are they things that you can look back and say, oh, I worked hard for that? You know, because that, that's what really gives you the wisdom is that experience, you know, of, of working to get it. Right. So, yeah. Well, I think he, I, in this next statement he's about to make here, he really knocks a home run out of the park. What's, what's the next thing he asks us to do? <laughs> every day, after the end of every day, we ask ourselves, what weakness did I overcome? Mm. What virtue did I acquire? Yes, because there's those moments when we lay down 
if we're not too tired, where our life is sort of going through our head at night, just before we drift off into unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, take that opportunity to ask yourself these two questions. What weakness did I overcome? Mm -hmm. What virtue have I acquired? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's powerful because that doesn't set you up for guilt or shame or blame. It just kind of gives you the opportunity to ask yourself, what, what thing did I do today that I normally fail at, that I did well today? And, and it almost, if you know you're gonna ask yourself this question, you're approaching the day knowing that whatever is happening is a test in a way yeah. of your weaknesses, your strengths, your trigger points, mm -hmm. your edges as they call them, right? And so one of the most satisfying things to Seneca is you come to that point and you ask yourself, what weakness did I overcome? That's a successful day, overcoming a weakness. What virtue did I acquire? What good habit, in other words, have I added to my plethora of things that I do on a daily basis? Yeah. And that's such a valuable way of introspection, you know, really just asking yourself without shame, without blame or guilt, these two things could transform the whole approach to living mm -hmm. in a way. What did it bring up for you? I think it stems towards the quote, he is most powerful who has power of himself. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yes. something that you can do. It's very small. You ask yourself these questions at the end of every day that can give you power, can give you a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. for your actions. Right. Once you get in the habit of asking yourself these questions, you want to actually like answer them with meaningful answers. Right. So it gives you encouragement to always pursue the next day of like, ooh, how can I, you know, be more accomplished today? You right. Know? I know that when we read these, when we listened to this, we started asking ourselves at the mm -hmm. end of the day, what weakness, I'd say, hey, babe, what weakness did you overcome? What virtue did you acquire? Yeah. And holding not just ourselves accountable, but each other accountable, not with a consequence, but with an opportunity. And the opportunity is to improve oneself. Yeah. To grow into that power that you speak of now. Yeah. And it can be the smallest thing at first. Yeah. You know, and it could be, I didn't eat sugar today. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> That's I, a, it could be a big thing for some I people. I <laughs> started drinking more water. I mean, it could be as simple as a basic human need yeah. or as profound as a philosophical truth that you've incorporated into your way of being on the planet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what weakness did you overcome today? What virtue will you acquire today? That's the question you want to be asking yourself. Mm -hmm. Seneca, knocking them out of the park. I wonder if he knew in 4 BC that there would be people 2,022 years later, actually more, yeah. listening to these words. And that's the power of thought. That's the power of writing down your thoughts that it can carry on to generations long past you, right? Yeah. Okay, what else do we got here? If you wish to be loved, love. Hmm. If you wish to be loved, love. I don't think it really gets more direct and simple and to the point than this basic premise that love begets love. Mm -hmm. If you want to be hated, hate, you might say as well, <laughs> right? And yeah. There's something to be said for the profound simplicity of this truth. Mm -hmm. If you want love, give love. Yes. Because that just reinforces the parallel truth that whatever we plant, we reap, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a basic truth. But way before any Christian tradition was to espouse loving your neighbor, here's Seneca, 4 BC, saying, love. What more potent message is there from the temple of love than if you want to be loved, love? Yeah. Does it work? It works. <laughs> Have you tried it? Yes. It's, uh, it's funny when people aren't getting along, if you just show them a little bit of kindness, a little bit of compassion, a little bit of empathy, mm -hmm. that loving touch, that loving way tends to bring them back around again. Because mm -hmm. it, it comes from a sense of acknowledging that we all just want to be loved. If you want love, you got to give it, you know, and, and sometimes that can be difficult if, if you're not in the space of love, 
but it can be the smallest thing, the smallest gesture, a touch on the shoulder. It can be a compliment, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just getting in the habit of giving to receive, you know. Yes, what virtue, it's a virtue to acquire for sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, we got a few more minutes left here for Seneca as we blaze through beautiful truths. What else does he have to say to us? Only thing that belongs to us is our time. Ah, it reminds me of Thoreau. He says, life is the amount of time that you exchange for living, It's essentially, right? The only thing that really belongs to us is our attention, our, our inner world, our thoughts, which are represented through our time. How we spend our time, whom we spend it with, what we spend it doing, that says everything about who we are and who we're going to become. And it's not, I think he, he sort of intimates towards this later. He says, it's not so much that life is short, but that we waste a lot of it doing nothing. Yeah. We spend a lot of our time just sort of talking about how short life is, but then acting like, we have all the time in the world to live anyways, right? Yeah. And so what we do with our time is purely ours to decide, assuming you're in a free situation. And I think that that's a valuable truth because it just boils down to the core essence that what all you really have are these moments that you've been given. Yeah. And what you do with them is completely up to you. Is that what you got from it? Or? Yeah, and I also got, you know, like, there can be things that you have that you value, but the most precious thing that you should value is your time and how you choose to spend it. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing that will always be with you from birth till death, you know, like it never leaves you. Right. Um, so it's, it's something that you want to give attention to building a relationship with is you know how you spend your time and and what you choose to do with your life you know mm -hmm. so that's a big one yeah it really is spare time how you spend your spare time most people in today's world have preoccupied themselves with jobs with a million things to do one of the things i love about living at the chrysalis the glass pyramid is that our life is very leisurely like we wake up we take care of our personal needs, we take care of our animals' needs, and then the rest of the day is pretty much up to us to do what we wish with. You know? It's We're so fortunate, you know? And I, I just wish that we lived in a world where everyone was taken care of in a way where they didn't have to go out and do a job they didn't like just to make money to have a roof over their head. Yeah. You know? But unfortunately, we are in a world like that, and it takes a lot to you know, get out of that and, and just try to do what you love to do, you know, that takes a, a big risk for some people. So we are very fortunate, yes. <laughs> okay. How you spend your time matters. Yes. All right, what else does Seneca have to teach us in our last 10 minutes here? While we teach, we learn. Well, how we teach, we learn. It's never, even the master, even the guru, even the... The, the yogi has learning to do while they're teaching, right? It makes me think of parents, like you're teaching your children a certain way of life and all the while you're learning what it means to be a parent mm -hmm. and still learning, as he says, every day how to live. So while we teach, we learn, again, reaffirming that life is a lifelong process of learning to live. Mm -hmm. And... Even if we're a teacher, once we've acquired that knowledge, we never stop learning. The great, greatest teachers never stop being students, in other words. It's another way to say that, right? Yeah. That's what it brought up for me. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I, there's so much to think about that because, in a way, everything that you do is... is it can have a potential for you to be a teacher in some way like we all in a way can be teachers mm -hmm. if we use the knowledge and experience that we are given with in just our our life you know when we use that to the best of our abilities 
we all have something to teach. Right. Because we all have our own unique perspective. But everyone who will read these quotes will have a whole different perspective of them than we do. Right. They have something to offer. You know, and so every everything can be something that you can teach. And and then it's just like you're in this ongoing process of teaching and learning at the mm -hmm. same time. Yes. It's such a beautiful synchronicity there. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, what else we got? Difficulty strengthens the mind. As labor strengthens the body, I mm -hmm. think is what the yeah, complete he statement. We don't want difficulty though, do we? We want to be lazy. We want to be able to just have life always be easy and everything come to us naturally. But those difficulties, those challenges, strengthen our mental ability. They strengthen mm -hmm. who we are on the inside as long as we face them with grace. Exactly. I mean, it's not enough just to go through difficulty after difficulty and never learn, right? It's we have to mindset. face it. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. What else? I, I, bring I, up for you? I think, you know, it when you go through a difficulty you can either go two routes you can see it as something to learn from and be in an optimistic state of being or you can be in a negative state of being where you let it get the best of you mm -hmm. you know and you let it dra drag you down right um but it strengthens the mind in a way where it gives you that opportunity to choose and it gives you the power to choose like i have the power to choose how i want to perceive this challenge in life mm -hmm. you know like people who are doing hard work jobs that they don't want to be doing if you have the perspective that you are in control of how you think and feel then no matter what you're doing, you are free, right. you know? And it, that's that's a power that you choose to take within yourself, no matter what you're doing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What else have we got from S Seneca, our friend, <laughs> Seneca? People are as miserable as they think they are. Oh, <laughs> you are as miserable or as happy, you could say, mm -hmm. as you imagine yourself to be, right? It's yeah. just about, again, he comes back to perspective. Mm -hmm. It's all about perspective. You can be happy, if, it's almost like saying, if you want to love, love. If you want to be happy, be happy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And not much more complicated than that, although we want to make it a lot more complicated. We want to say, what about this? What about that? What about those other things that are taking place? Yes. And the universe is constantly re-inviting us to the space that says, you can be happy or you can be sad as you wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's up to us. It's up to us. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said about that. It's up to you. Yeah. All right. What else we got? Life is long if you know how to use it. Yeah. I mean, you think about even if you live to be 100, you think, man, I wish there was more time. We, we all think we want to be immortal. He's saying life's not short. You, you're complaining that life is short. You don't have, no, it's just you need to learn how to use this life mm -hmm. in a way that makes it long, that makes it memorable, meaningful. And mm -hmm. in a way, he almost intimates that if you live life well and in the right way, a good way, that even after you've passed, that life can continue in a way. Like Seneca is now speaking to us beyond the grave because of a life well lived. Mm -hmm. If he were just some idiot, we wouldn't be talking about what he thought in 4 BC, right? Yeah. We'd be talking about somebody else, but we're here talking about Seneca because he chose to live the good life. Mm -hmm. All right, what else? Does it bring up anything for you? Life is long if you know how to use it. I mean, yeah, if you choose to do the things that bring you happiness and you choose to just be in a state of peace and serenity within yourself, no matter what goes on around you, you know, and you use your tools, you know, you, you learn how to live. Mm -hmm. then life isn't short it's as, it's it can be as long as you want it to be you know it's how you create it to be again perspective right mm -hmm. yeah 
Mm. Perspective, perspective, perspectives. All right. Now, last few minutes here. What else do you got to teach us? Enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. <sighs> That's easier said than done. When you, it's so easy to get caught up in what might or might not happen in what's just around the corner as opposed to what's right now on our plate in front of us. Enjoying the present without anxious dependence upon the future. I'd say we could even add upon the past in there. Mm -hmm. Be here now, yeah. be in this moment, be present and enjoy it fully without thinking about the next moments because in a way that's an insult to this current moment. Yeah, it's saying you're not it enough. I need to look outside of this. Yeah. So being content with the now, that's it's, what I get from that. It's so true, because when I find myself in the moments where I feel like I am thinking too much, you know, about, oh, what do I gotta do? What happened, you know, all these things, I, I get so down on myself and I just don't have any motivation to do anything in the moment, you know, and it's, it's not worth it. It's like, it's not worth going down the trail of thought too far. It's like, there's a, there, you gotta have a limit there. You right. know? It doesn't help. It doesn't really help. Right. It yeah. only kind of distracts you from what needs to be done. Yeah. It's, mm. it's thought is helpful to an extent. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you know, you gotta take like a pause. Okay. Let's just too much thinking. Yeah. Too much thinking. Can be too let's, much. Let's, let's like put a stop here and, and just enjoy what we have right. because you never know. If what will happen within the next moment, you know. All right. Yeah, I like that. What? I and mean, we had some other notes. Where are they at? Yes. Yeah, right here. All right. Oh, true happiness is to understand our duties towards God and each other. Mm -hmm. Just understanding your duty in life gives you happiness, right? Yes. What did that bring up for you? Anything? Yeah, a lot. I mean, it, um, it 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 seems to take a while for people to truly understand what they're born to do, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Because um, I feel at least in the schooling system that we have, it's it can be upgraded in a way where it can you know, hopefully one day teach us more on how to be happy, how to live well, you know? Because right. that's more important if you know how to do that then you have more peace of mind to know yourself you know instead of the rushing game of oh i gotta get out there and do something you know it's right. like let's just try to get to know who we are so that we know what we're born to do because that's where true happiness comes from and that's the meaning of life you know mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Well, we're running a little bit low on time here, so we have time for maybe one more. I think you know, we true. have 10 of them chosen here, but let's pick one. I like, I like this one. Sometimes even just to live is an act of courage. Sometimes yeah. just facing the day, yeah. just getting up, putting your shoes on, getting out the door, that can be an act of courage, mm -hmm. especially when life is so daunting and overwhelming and there's so many myriad meticulous little details to think about. He's saying, sometimes just to live is the greatest act of courage you can, you can I mean, you don't wanna get out of bed, get out of bed. That's an act of courage. You don't mm -hmm. wanna be nice to your neighbor, be nice to your neighbor. That's an act of courage. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna say I love you to someone, say I love you. That's the act of courage. Pushing yourself beyond the boundaries of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm and into those liminal spaces where you're able to experience a new threshold of reality, it takes courage it to does. face the unknown, yeah. right? And that's what we do every day on a daily basis. We face the unknown, even if the unknown is just what's going to happen next, right? Yeah. What, did it, what did it raise for you? It, you know, what I think of is um, sometimes to live means being okay with being selfish in a way mm. like the things that you do have the belief that you're doing it for yourself you're not just going out there and doing it for someone else you're everything you're doing you're doing it for yourself you know and you come at it with that perspective it gives you more courage 
-hmm. to give to others in a way that's more fulfilling, you know, because you you have fulfilled your cup so that you can really give to others at right. your best. Right. Yeah. So let's have the courage to live. Mm -hmm. Let's have the courage to make the choices that are challenging to make. Let's take all that Seneca has brought to us and remember that our life is ours to create. I think that ultimately that's where he's taking us down a path of self-creation, self-edification. And that in securing one's self in those regards, we then secure our interactions with others. We then also provide a stable foundation for those who love us to love us. And I think that it gives us permission in a way to be the best and potentially the most beautiful version of ourselves. And that's what it's about for me, being the most beautiful version of Dreaming Bear mm -hmm. and giving that version to myself as a gift because I deserve it, but also as a way of showing up for the people that I love in this world. Not just here to be alone, we're here to interact. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, my big takeaway from Seneca is that your life is yours to create and you're, whether you're aware of it or not, in every moment, you are creating it. The moments where you're not aware, you're still creating it in a way possibly that you don't want to be creating it. Mm -hmm. So be aware, stay centered in oneself and approach life with this. I think one of the things he said as well, we didn't get to it, but he says everywhere there's a human, there's an opportunity to love, to be kind. Mm, yeah. That's it. Wherever there's a person, there's an opportunity. And the opportunity is to love mm -hmm. and to be kind. Yeah. So what's your big takeaway? Any, any last words on Seneca before we say goodbye? Every day, every moment is an opportunity to improve yourself. So let's just be the best versions of ourselves. Yeah. Shazam. Boom. Thank you for joining us here at the Temple of Love on our vacation. And we hope that you've enjoyed Seneca. If you hadn't listened to him yet, go back and listen to him now. You're going to love it. I love it. When someone reaches out to me and they have problems, I say, listen to this. And he seems to just sort of touch on all the most important aspects of being human. Anything else you want to say to the home audience before we say goodbye? Many blessings. Love to you all. Thanks for joining us, family. We hope that you're enjoying this literati experience as much as we are. Aloha. Aloha.